Hello and welcome back to part three in my series of videos comparing the Synology DSM Graphical User Interface and Application Center with QNAP's QTS uh, GUI and App Service. These are both great platforms that arrive with their respective NAS platforms and of course I am utilizing the QNAP TS 53D series and comparing it with the Synology 20 Plus Intel powered series. Although most of the things that we're going to talk about in all of these videos apply to pretty much any Synology or QNAP NAS depending on the power. But just like the other videos, let's get the disclaimers right out the way. I'm sure they're on screen, but otherwise, first bear in mind I am utilizing OBS to record this screen. So bear in mind that may take an impact on the fluidity of the windows as they open. As this is a music video, I am going to disable sound because the last thing I need is this video being pulled by some of the YouTube bots. So unfortunately there will be no music played in this video, which is super annoying for a video about audio. Next, I am squishing both of these into one window. As you see, the right hand side DSM, the left hand side QTS. So consequently, I have had to zoom out a little bit and it may result in some of the text being slightly blurry for you or the windows being slightly misshaped. This isn't to do with the applications themselves and more to do with the fact that I'm squishing both of these into half a window each on my desktop. Next, I am utilizing network only access. I'm not using the internet. And although both of these NASs are connected to the internet, as is this computer that I'm using, the services and everything I'm running today will run without internet access. And that is also said, I'm utilizing a 1GBE network with both NASs being connected over 1GBE. So therefore they're both sharing network bandwidth, which occasionally might mean that if one device is doing something busy with the network, it may impede the other. Unfortunately, this is unavoidable. So if that does happen, I'll try to point it out throughout. <clears throat> And lastly, I am running a standard desktop setup here, but I've got quite a lot of NASs dotted around me. Um, and to limit noise, I've had to close things in a little bit, but unfortunately that means that occasionally you will hear my keyboard and you will hear my mouse. So do bear that in mind and I'll try to remove them in post, but I apologize if they're still in it. But all that disclaimer out of the way, let's get straight on with it. We are looking at the 53D and the 920 Plus, and we want to see how they both run today. So, in terms of music, they're actually, this is probably one of the areas in which these two brands are the most similar. In pretty much everything we're gonna talk about in this series of videos, you'll always find that the Synology does things in a very streamlined way, and kind of limits a lot of your choices, but does a very stable and smooth user interface, although less customizable. The QNAP, far more customizable, far more options of configuration open to you, but it does have a little bit more of a learning curve and a, probably a little bit more intimidating the amount of stuff you see on screen. I'll often compare QNAP to the likes of Android and Windows and Synology to Mac. But another comparison I'll be making more and more in my multimedia videos, <coughs> sorry, sore throat there, is more about console versus PC, with the QNAP being very much more like gaming on the PC with a lot more configuration and scaling, and ultimately you can tweak it to get the most out of it, with Synology being more like console, a lot more fixed in the way consoles have fixed frame rates or fixed graphical output, but for a much smoother, more stable experience. It's also worth highlighting that I am adding some files for a future video on the QNAP and that may result in some indexing happening in the background. So you will see the odd spike occasionally here on CPU, but that's more to do with some indexing happening in the background. But, so both platforms have their own dedicated music playing application. In the case of QNAP, it is Music Station 5. And on the case of the Synology, it is Audio Station. There is, of course, mobile applications too for iOS and Android. And again, this is another example of having this in a limited window. It does break the window a little bit. But again, that's not Synology. That's the OBS and half screen. Now, as mentioned, there's iOS and Android applications and other applications too that I'm going to touch on later on that does differentiate these two brands quite a lot. But um, although along with the file management video we did showing that you could play music files in their respective file station applications, Today we're looking at the dedicated tools for music, to play music in your web browser, but also distribute and share a lot of those files too. Again, there's the slight delay that I was talking about there on shared network and uh, OBS. So, 
First we'll look at the Synology offering, far more graphical, quite simple in design there, uh, which is what a lot of people might want. Uh, this user interface here allows you to create playlists, browse through the music that's on the NAS in dedicated music folders. Allows you to get a lot of information about some of the files that you might be listening to there. Um, so we go for like Need for Speed 2 background music there. We can share the file if we choose, find out song information in the background. If it is in the metadata of that file, if there's lyrics and stuff like that, who made the file, a lot of information there. Lots of background stuff that we can dig out. On top of that, you can cycle by artist, by folder, by composer, and you can do lots of customizable playlists as well as adding internet radio stations if you choose. And there's quite a few options open to you. You can add your own URL, maybe it's an RSS feed, or you can browse some of their own options available to you. You can browse files, you can choose devices you might want to stream your multimedia to if they're on the local area network and you've connected them with the NAS. And we will be talking about DLNA media playback shortly, but this is dedicated uh, music playback in your web browser. Lots of options there, lots of playback. If we play a file, double click it, it will start playing at the base. Click play there, and there's lots of options as well. Create a playlist, and I know you can't hear the file right now in the background, but a lot of that is just simply to do with the YouTube box and I don't really fancy getting the account pulled. You can shuffle the playlist, you can recycle music, you can get the whole thing to give more information there. And again, lots of easy options available to you there and you can flick between artist artwork if you've got the thumbnails generated. Um, there are options for scraping metadata but not really uh, on the audio side as much as you find on others but it's still very good and a nice simple user interface and everything's kind of where you expect it to be there's customizable options built into the top what folders you want browsed for indexed information where you want information pulled from in terms of metadata scraping there in the background for thumbnails and uh, lyrics and again lots of connections there about DLNA listing that we'll talk about in a bit so quite straightforward, quite streamlined, nice and straightforward. The QNAP side of things, a little bit more detail, it has to be said, um, but detail in the analytical sense and in the customizable sense rather than in the graphical sense. You can go to spotlight mode, which is kind of like a simple playback mode, and you can select streaming media devices up here, where if you've got devices in your local area network that have got audio streaming capabilities, they will be found here and you can direct uh, your media to them, just casting files directly to them. Uh, there's customization options there about where you want the media found, and there's a lot more information coming up soon on that with Multimedia Console, as well as access permissions and individual users, what they've got access to and how they've got access to it. There's also support of more multimedia network devices on the QNAP, as well as Bluetooth audio dongles as well. And again, Lots of customization options there, but the spotlight mode is a little bit more simplistic in design, and I know it's not really for everyone. You can go through different file types and how they're played and when they were played and create smart playlists that way, or go to the management side for a far more analytical viewpoint, which is not dissimilar to what we've already seen on the Synology side. Again, change viewpoints, select, go into background information, and find that information on files within the, the, the server. So if we go into multimedia, let's go for that gaming folder again. Let's find that Need for Speed folder that we just talked about. Let's have a look here. Let's find Need for Speed. Might be easier to just literally search for a track. So if we go for that one, was it Need for? And we'll do a quick search there. Find the file. Right click, go for information, and again, similar information, but it has scratched the metadata of that file there for us in the background. Lots of information there, lots of information about where it lives in the background. Maybe a pinch less than you might like, but it's still not too bad, and there's not a huge amount of metadata there in the background on that folder. So media servers there, the tab, it finds servers in your local area network, which you can then add manually, or get audio music from these devices. So we can open up the 920 there, as you can see. Open up the NAS, and now we're accessing another NAS. I've already entered the server credentials in the background. And from here, we can now access the audio files on that NAS over the local area network, thanks to DLNA media playback. So lots of handy add-ons there. 
We can add those radios as well, add radio tunes, get the multimedia streaming done there in the background and the metadata scraping. Loads of the options you want there. And it does seem to be just a little bit more analytical there than that of the Synology, which you might not want. But if you do, you're spoiled for choice. We can go to the icon folder. We can go to the individual songs, switch to albums. And again, lots of different things open to us there. All of them nice and straightforward and all of them readily accessible, as you can see there. So let's go back to the albums on that one as well and see how they both compare. And again, there'll just be the extra few seconds there on the Synology due to the network bandwidth being consumed by one more than the other. But we're seeing a lot of similarity there between these two platforms and how you can view the information on your respective systems. Uh, and that's if you're using the web browser. And they're very similar, they both play back in a very similar way. You can both cast files in the way it pulls information too. But the majority of users aren't really going to be accessing music on the web browser in this way. They might be utilizing a mapped network drive, they might be using those um, localized files and folders that we talked about before with QSync and Synology Drive. But most people are going to be using the likes of DLNA Media Streaming or utilizing dedicated audio playback devices like Sonos Sound Systems and Amazon Echo or Amazon Alexa to playback those files. Now, both of these platforms have that music app for playing um, via the web browser and with both of them supporting uh, playback via DLNA as a media server. Now, Synology has the dedicated media server application and this multimedia application here will allow you to say, what files and folders you want browsed, how you want files to be browsed, and a few little security credentials there in the background that allow your multimedia to be streamed over the network to smart TVs, to other multimedia servers, be they music, photo, or video, and lots of other options. The QNAP also has the same sort of setup, but as you would expect, there's a bunch more options, probably more options than some of you might use, and a lot of information about linking multiple servers together over DLNA. So both of them have got that DLNA multimedia support pretty much given to you straight off the bat, allowing you to access multimedia in music, video, photo files, as well as utilizing uh, mapped network drives and shared folders over DLNA. But they both, after this, have a few distinctive changes in which they approach the idea of music sharing. So in the case of the QNAP, they have got multimedia console, something I've touched on in a previous video and will continue to touch on in future videos. It's regarding how the system indexes your media. So you can go straight into the DLNA media streaming or the music station multimedia streaming and select the files and folders that are indexed, as well as including files and folders that you want to exclude from searches. For DLNA, exactly the same logic applies and allows you to choose what media will be distributed via the local area network. On top of that, the QNAP has way, way, way more applications within the NAS to create tailored audio setups for dedicated devices. They've got the likes of Rune, they've got Mimi Server, they've got Quonky Server, SuperSync iTunes Multimedia Server, they have got uh, multimedia add-ons and codex packs and media um, cinema 28. All of these tools are different versions of audio handling network file sharing apps for different tailored file types. And with a greater degree of codex supported, chances are you're going to be able to play back more troublesome audio, audio files like MP4A and more. Now, the Synology does have support of iTunes. It has its own iTunes server support as well. And of course, multimedia playback, although it doesn't have as many tailored multimedia streaming apps as the QNAP, it does have a couple of very interesting core advantages. Now, the Synology, if you want to play back your multimedia, not on a smart TV, but on the likes of an Amazon Fire Stick or a Amazon Alexa or Echo, you are in luck because Synology is one of the only platforms out there that has dedicated applications for both Amazon's Echo platform and Amazon's Fire Stick 
platform. This allows you to have dedicated first party apps to interact and access files on your NAS on these devices. QNAP on the other hand does not have official applications for Amazon Fire Stick or Alexa slash Echo. You can utilize the My Media application, something we've done a video on in the past and we have a follow up video coming soon that allows you to stream your media via voice activation to these um, uh, the Fire Stick and Alexa from your QNAP NAS. Or you can use things like VLC or UPnP Finder for Fire Stick or Alexa. Those skills and those apps, there's lots of options open to you. However, there's a lot more first party apps open to you on the Synology platform. And once again, this is very much the rhetoric of both of these brands. With QNAP giving you a lot more diversity and customization and um, unique ways in which you can interact with the data on your NAS for audio streaming, but lots of options can lead to confusion and lots of options can intimidate some users and therefore Synology has gone down the route to keep things simple, keep things first party and ultimately keep things streamlined. And although that does mean occasionally limitations on what you can do, if you do things the way the Synology recommends, it will be done the best way possible. And I think, as usual, this represents both of these brands very, very well. But, once again, this is not about which one's better. It's about which one's better for you and the way you want to access your audio. So do let me know in the comments which one you think best suits your needs. And otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. And do visit the links in the description to NAS Compares, where there's lots more information about NAS. And hopefully I can help you choose the right NAS for you first time. I'll see you next time.